Well, thank you, David. It's, it's really great to, to be here uh, with the uh, entire team, with so many of you. Uh, we really are excited about launching this Lung Cancer Master Protocol, which, as you heard, uh, meets the unmet need of uh, lung cancer patients with genetic abnormalities, finding the patients and getting them to the drug. And um, we really hope that this will be a trial that's done throughout uh, SWAG, throughout the intergroup uh, mechanism, and we really want to target the communities. This is a type of trial that really should be done um, at practices throughout the country. Well, you heard from David that the, the goal here was to try to uh, develop a trial where we could treat patients with um, lung cancers, with uh, genetic abnormalities in specific ways. Right now in, in drug development, um, as, we de where, as we move into the molecular age, there are two types of trials uh, that, are, that are being uh, contemplated and being uh, formed. One's an umbrella trial, and the other is called the basket trial. Let me talk about the basket trial first. The basket trial might be a trial that you have at your center um, for patients that you uh, do profiling on, and they have a, a RAS mutation or a RAF mutation or an EGFR mutation. And what you can have is you have uh, a trial that's open to any patient of any tumor type that has that abnormality. And uh, these are popping up. Drug companies are sponsoring them. Institutions have them. And that allows you to have something to do for a patient um, um, with that abnormality. And in fact, the NCI has a program called the MASH, which is helping in that way. The trial that we're talking about today is an umbrella trial. Uh, the reason we call this an umbrella trial is this trial is only for patients with non-small cell lung cancer. In fact, it's only for patients with refractory non-small cell lung cancer treated one time. And it's only for patients with squamous cell lung cancer. So a very uh, specific group of patients, a very difficult group of patients. Uh, as you know, there haven't been very many new drugs specifically for squamous cell lung cancer in many years. Other examples of uh, umbrella trials, well known to many, uh, the BATTLE trial was an umbrella trial. Uh, that was phase two, not phase three. The iSPY was an umbrella trial in breast cancer, very successful. That was phase two, not phase three. The beauty of this, as you'll hear from in a moment, is this trial is designed to take drugs all the way from phase two to phase three, hopefully to approval, and then they'll become much more widely available. Well, what is the design? Well, the uh, idea was to have a multi-arm design. As you heard, this came out of the Friends of Cancer Research, um, which uh, I was very closely involved with, and also an NCI meeting that Fred led uh, with Shakun Malak and, and Claudia dansky Ullman uh, about a year and a half, two years ago as well. So the design was to have a multi-arm study to treat homogenous patient populations with consistent eligibility from arm to arm. So modular arms um, for each patient as they have an abnormality, and you'll see that, can go into each arm. Each arm is independent. Uh, we envision that some arms will come, some will go. We'll add arms as we go. We want a very uh, strong infrastructure. You'll see we, we really, uh, so many people have worked to bring this to, 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 to bear. And we wanted to allow, as I said, a phase two to three design to allow for rapid dr drug biomarker testing, and we want to see home runs. We want to see large effects. We're going to screen a large number of patients. I've always thought one of the best ways to get molecular profiling into the mainstream is to screen patients from all over the country. We're going to screen uh, as many as 1,250 patients a year. We're going to use a next generation sequencing pro uh, platform selected um, through a, an RFA mechanism. We're using foundation medicine. And we're going to hopefully have a sufficient hit rate to engage patients and physicians. More than 50% of patients will have a specific biomarker that allows them to go on to one of four arms. And for those that don't have a specific biomarker, they're going to get immune therapy. And for those who are just at the lung session, you see how important immunotherapy is as a target, PD-1, PD-L1 checkpoint inhibition. We want to bring drugs to the patients and hopefully get them approved. Well, we had a large infrastructure to make this possible. The first thing we had to do was select the drugs. I see many of the members of, of this committee here. Um, what we tried to do was encompass uh, expertise from throughout the intergroup, um, from industry. Uh, we, we brought a number of people onto the drug com uh, selection committee who had been with industry but now weren't with a specific company. They could lend their expertise. And you can see that we had voting members and, and non-voting members of this committee. Uh, this committee currently is meeting every two weeks because even though the trial is starting, we're already thinking about what the next drugs are going to be. And we, we seek your input. Anyone who has a trial at their center targeting squamous lung cancer, it could be a combination trial, we're looking for new drugs, 
new targets for this disease. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it already. But you can see we had a large, about, a large uh, group that worked together on this, uh, and we, we had you know, good oversight and good input from the NCI, the FNAH, from the FDA. It really has been a team effort. And that gets to the governance structure, and I saw him in the back a second ago, but Chuck Blanke and, and the entire SWAG operation has been so support, supportive to David, myself, the entire Lung Committee. We really have had you know, so much uh, uh, time and effort put into this trial. Uh, and as you can see, we, we are a, uh, what we call a public-private partnership. That's good, by the way, because the, the public part works really well. The NCI mechanism, the SWAG, we have the infrastructure in SWAG to run these trials. The thing that we're getting from the... Uh, the, the private part is we're getting industry support and money. So the public-private partnership is really drilling very well. You see we have a group called the Friends of Cancer Research, uh, led by Ellen Siegel with Jeff Allen, who's been very supportive of the FDA. Uh, we've had very good access with Rick Pazder, Janet Woodcock, to guide us in these efforts. The NCI, Shakun Malik is here, Jeff Abrams. The NCI has been very supportive. And then, of course, really a lot of this has work, been through SWAG. And I've been very proud of the organization, that how well we've worked with this, this entire group, uh, and the industry supporters are here, who are here. We couldn't do it without you. You provide us your drugs and your support and your financing, plus you're working together with other companies. This collaboration is just so wonderful. And you can see we have an oversight committee we have that meets on, on a monthly basis. The executive operations group is headed by myself and Valley, and she'll speak in a moment. And then uh, a whole bunch of project management working through the organization, through SWAG, uh, support from the foundation for the N NIH, You'll meet some of these people in a little while. And you can imagine, this is not one protocol, it's five protocols with all the screening, plus we're already planning for new arms. But we've done it, we're, we're ready to launch at the end of the month, and, and we really are very proud that we're gonna bring these new drugs to our patients.